people who are connected can hear us also. So welcome all of you. We see many new faces and many new countries, and we are very glad you came. My name is Renata Bielak. I'm from Statistics Poland, and I have a pleasure to co-chair together with Sarah Frankl from Statistics Sweden, steering group on statistics for SDGs. On behalf of the co-chairs, the whole steering group and UNEC secretariat, we welcome you on the seventh expert meeting on statistics for SDGs. It's the second time we meet here in Geneva after the pandemic, and we have uh, this hybrid meeting. So welcome all of you, also these participants who are connected virtually and follow our meeting. We launched expert meeting in 2017 as a forum for experts from national statistical offices, international organizations, custodian agencies, and other stakeholders who are responsible for measurement of progress for SDGs. Expert meeting focuses on strategic issues that are essential for production of data for SDGs, for coordination of reporting of indicators, and also for communicating of statistics for SDGs. Steering group has had its annual meeting in last October in Cork, and we have started preparations to this expert meeting during our steering group meeting. We started these preparations with discussion what issues are challenging nowadays and worth to take, a, take up as topic of the sessions. What we finally agreed is included in the agenda. So today we are going to talk about SDG Data Lab and the benefits from this platform. In the afternoon, we will consider how to deal with shrinking resources and why do we need partnerships with policymakers. Tomorrow we will continue our discussion with two more interesting topics. Disaggregation and inclusive data. This is the morning session tomorrow. And in the afternoon tomorrow, we will continue talking about the development of SDGs monitoring using non-traditional non -traditional data sources. And as usual, we start expert meeting with some updates from the steering group and related group of SDGs. Each session seems very attractive and promising. And while we planned the agenda, we tried to find some time for discussion. So I encourage you to make comments, to ask questions, to participate actively in our meeting. For uh, people who are connected virtually, it will be possi possibility to to make comments on the chat and we will follow the chat. I wish you all fruitful discussion and successful meeting. And before we start with the first session, I would like to give the floor to Tina Luige, our priceless associate mm -hmm. and host. Tina, please, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Renata. Good morning to everyone. So uh, my name is Tina Luiga. I'm the chief of the section uh, that is working on SDGs uh, and uh, many other cross-cutting issues uh, here in UNEC Statistical Division and at the moment also officer of charge uh, of the division. So I welcome you all on behalf of the uh, Statistical Division and on behalf of this uh, small team that has been preparing uh, this meeting. So first of all, there is Jonathan Gessendorfer, who is now the SDG person in, in our division, and then uh, Caroline Genet, who is the program assistant, who is dealing with uh, all kinds of this uh, uh, registration uh, of participants and, and making uh, sure that the meeting will, will uh, happen. Um, 
Unfortunately, I still have to say in the beginning of the meeting the same thing that I said uh, one year ago, that we are all aware of the uh, war currently going on in Ukraine, one of the UNEC member countries, and the UN standpoint on this is uh, very clear, uh, referring to the UN General Assembly resolutions and the many statements by the UN Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, condemning Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which is, among other things, also against the Charter of the United Nations. But, uh, however, I would also like to mention the important role of different United Nations bodies dealing with the resolving conflicts between member countries. And having said that, and acknowledging the suffering and dying of many humans caused by this conflict, I would li like to remind you of the technical nature of our meeting. The United Nations, and in particular UNEC, have always been a place where countries can get together to discuss, even in situation of political conflict or war. Today's meeting is not a place to express political views or statements. We believe that this is in the interest of all participants, and we kindly invite you to respect this. So coming back now to the substance of our meeting, I'm happy to see here so many people uh, yesterday we had exactly 100 uh, registrations for the meeting, but today there were some more <laughs> registrations coming, uh, coming in, and we see so many people uh, uh, present here in person, also new faces, new countries. Uh, a lot of those uh, UN regional coordinators' offices are represented, uh, for which we are very happy because it, uh, it is good to keep a close link with, with all this work, also some people from the policy side, so they are, they are all warmly uh, welcome. Uh, with SDGs, we are at the midpoint. Uh, there will be um, now also today a presentation of this annual report that the UNEC prepares about the regional uh, progress. And, uh, but for the whole region, we could estimate progress only in about two-thirds of the SDG indicators. Um, because for others, there is just not enough data available. And of those targets for which there is enough uh, data, which is 115 targets, also about two-thirds of all targets, only 21 are on track to achieve the goals. And Andres will talk about uh, this uh, um, a bit uh, later in his presentation. Uh, the, the data and this number where we are on track is even is lower than last year. And when we take into account that all the data is coming with some time lag, then we can expect that the uh, um, situation, the picture will be even less promising next year. So there is a lot of work still to do with the data. What are the reasons for that and how can we make uh, progress? We will discuss that over the coming two years and we hope that from discussion there would be um, ideas also maybe for concrete things that we can do with the steering group and with the task teams that we have to support countries. In, in this work and to, to uh, help making progress in measuring progress, referring to one of those uh, slogans that we had in our uh, roadmap on statistics for SDGs. Uh, as uh, Renata said, this expert meeting is prepared by the steering group on statistics for SDGs. They have worked with great enthusiasm and put a lot of effort into uh, uh, making this a useful and inspiring meeting. So I would like to thank already from the outset the two excellent co-chairs of our steering group, Renata and Sara, uh, and for leading this work, the chairs of the, the three task teams that we have, Carolina Santons, uh, uh, Olga Svert Svertkot Strujewska, <laughs> Marina Gandolfo, Jelena Markovic, Claire Plateau, and now Irina Erchova from UK, who is uh, taking it um, over from uh, Otis, and also the moderators of the sessions today, Liva Rögnerud, not today, and also tomorrow, Carolina Santos, Mary Smith, and Irvin Chuisal. They have put a lot of effort to make it into a, an interesting, inspiring meeting, 
So we hope it will be like that. And we are looking very, very uh, much uh, forward to an interesting uh, uh, meeting. Before giving the floor back to our distinguished co-chairs, I invite then also Jonathan to inform you about some housekeeping items for the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Tina, and good morning, everyone from my side as well. Um, my name is Jonathan Gessendorfer, and hopefully I will uh, assist today and tomorrow uh, um, our co-chair as well in, in handling this meeting. Um, so there are quite a handful of uh, organizational issues and uh, technical uh, technical things to mention. I'm starting uh, with um, issues that are important for people that are connected via WebEx. So uh, this is an in-person meeting, technically, but uh, we have been able to provide an online connection via WebEx. But this online connection has some limitations, mainly concerning interpretation. So everyone that um, participates online will uh, hear the English channel only and will not be able to select the French or the Russian interpretation and also will not be able to hear the floor language. Another limitation concerning uh, interpreta um, interpretation are the length of the total interventions per morning and afternoon sessions that can be made from online participants. Unfortunately, we are only able to interpret, have interpretation for 30 minutes per morning and afternoon session. And that means we will have to prioritize the presentations that are given online and would ask um, people that would want to make interventions uh, that they give those interventions in English. Um, if you have any technical problems, you can write to me uh, in the chat of WebEx um, and I will, I will make sure to contact you um, quickly. Uh, if you have an intervention or a question as an online participant, we ask you to post your question in the chat and that way, we can ensure that your comments or questions are reflected in the report. If there is time, we also may give the floor to online participants, but we cannot uh, guarantee that we will have the time for this. If you would like to make an intervention, you can use the raise hand feature in WebEx. And if you are invited to speak, uh, we ask you to switch on your camera. If you are not speaking uh, and are uh, participating online, I ask you to switch off your camera and always have your microphone muted. To the people in the room, when you are asking for the floor, you can uh, take your nameplate, put it in an upright position. Uh, if it appears that we do not see you, maybe you can also hold it up a little bit higher. Um, and uh, I will help the session moderators to keep track of the order uh, of uh, interventions. And also, I would like you I would like to inform you that this meeting is going to be recorded. Now, after this morning session, we will take a group photo and that uh, group photo will take place in the human rights room. It's a little bit difficult to find. Uh, so I would advise everyone to just uh, follow uh, us, me and Tina, um, and, uh, or anyone that, that seems to know their way, their way around here. And the room number is room 20, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Afterwards, uh, you can have lunch, and uh, one of the easiest places to get lunch here is in the cafeteria, and you can find the cafeteria by leaving uh, the meeting room and taking a right, and you will enter a small staircase, and after that staircase, take another right. But there are also uh, signs that indicate the direction, and again, a lot of people have been around uh, these, this building a lot, so you can also just follow people that seem to know the way around. Um, for those of you who are here in person and have registered uh, tonight, we will have a dinner at Café Papon at 7 p.m. And uh, there will be copies of maps of the old town uh, in, the, in the afternoon, and hopefully you can find your way there. Um, and we are also always uh, reachable via, uh, via email if you do not. Um, also, in that table in the back, there will be uh, copies of recent publications issued by the division, and you are welcome to take any of them you would like. 
if you do not have space in your luggage or do not want to carry them for any other reasons, we, you can also, we can also send them to you. So you can just let us know by email. Lastly, if you have any uh, problems or questions, um, you can come to me or my colleague Caroline. And with that, I invite our co-chairs, Ms. Renata Bilak and Sarah Frankel to guide us into the session. Thank you, Jonathan, and thank you, Tina, for this warm welcome. So now it's time to start session one, and I would like to ask Sarah to present work plan of the steering group. Sarah, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Renata. Um, and I would like to say welcome also from me. It's so nice to see you all again. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here in Geneva again, in this beautiful building, and uh, with this beautiful group of people. Um, do we have the presentation? Yeah. Would you like to well, uh, sit here? No, I can just tell you to yeah. switch slides if you want. There, great. Uh, you can uh, um, click to the next slide straight away. Um, so, um, the steering group held its annual meeting in, in Cork in October last year, um, graciously hosted by the Irish Statistical Office. Um, at that meeting, we held a workshop uh, and a priority exercise to develop the work plan for 2023. Next slide, please. Um, the, uh, it, it said on the first, first slide that it's the proposed work plan, but I would say that it actually is the work plan. Um, it is, as you would say, a living document that will be updated and uh, details can be adjusted. Uh, it is in the form of an Excel, Excel file um, at the moment, uh, organized really well. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, and it means that we can add details and divide responsibilities among us and, and make it into a, a proper action plan. Uh, next slide, please. So let's dive into it. Uh, the work plan starts with uh, a, a few um, reoccurring or standing uh, items. Uh, the finalization of the work plan, which is, is now done. Um, um, and, and the promotion, the, the, the second item is the promotion of products of the steering group, which is also a standing work plan item. Um, this year, the focus will be on the roadmap, uh, on the uh, second edition of the roadmap uh, through, pro through the promotional kit that was developed by um, uh, the um, communication task team uh, and uh, the 2023 Statistical Commission side event, which unfortunately did not happen. Um, so we have to focus on the next uh, commission, I guess. Um, and organizing the expert meeting, which is also annually occurring. Um, next slide, please. We then have uh, some items of high priority according to the results of the work plan that we held. Um, we are planning to develop a an SDG training course for young statisticians in uh, NSOs. Uh, we're planning uh, to work on non-traditional data sources. Um, we will have a session on that uh, in this expert meeting, and we're also discussing um, developing a platform for exchange of experiences. Uh, Last year, was it, we had a, we held a webinar with policymakers in May last year, um, which was very successful. 
so we plan to um, uh, to do that again. Um, the first idea uh, and possibly um, annually reoccurring uh, event. Um, the first idea is to to do a webinar with policymakers on VNRs to promote using uh, official statistics or statistics in, in the VNRs. Uh, and then we have a, an item on updating the information on the UNECE Knowledge Hub on statistics for SDGs. And I think we will hear some more about that from Jonathan later today or later this morning even. Um, uh, we are uh, or have uh, updated the country progress table uh, and uh, potentially will update also the country case studies that are on the Knowledge Hub. Now, next slide, please. We also have some items on uh, in the uh, work plan that are of medium priority. Uh, according to the results, again, from the workshop, um, we have proposed to develop materials on how to deal with shrinking resources and costs for, for monitoring uh, SDGs. The first step in that will be this, the, the, the um, session uh, on the, um, on this, in this meeting. Uh, we are also um, planning or to potentially organize a webinar on taxonomy on a, of SDG indicators. Um, it's something that Norway has been working on and which is, seems really interesting. I think we had a short presentation on that last year. Uh, another item that we have proposed is to do interviews with policymakers. Uh, and we are also uh, thinking about competence profiles for statisticians working with SDGs. Uh, so those are, are the items that are in the work plan uh, at the moment. And um, we are, I should say, also planning, of course, you have the items in this presentation, which will be, present, which will be published on the uh, meeting website. Uh, but we will also, from this Excel file, develop a, a, a work plan that is more sort of presentable for for everyone. So and 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 uh, put that on the wiki so that you can access it. Uh, next slide, please. And you are very welcome to get in touch uh, with us if you'd like to contribute to any of of the activities in the. Um, work plan. And next slide, please. You have the contact information for for us, all four of us up here, <laughs> I think. So if you'd like to contribute, um, you're well, very welcome to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for this presentation. So now you are aware of what we are doing in the steering group. And some of the items Sarah mentioned we'll discuss in more details during the sessions. But if you have any questions or comments, it's time now for you to ask. I don't see any. Jonathan, online? Can you? Nothing, nothing online also. Okay, I think it's just obvious and as Sarah mentioned, you can see soon the work plan on the website. Mm -hmm. So now I invite Jonathan to present revision of the country progress table and summary of questionnaire responses. Jonathan, please. Thank you, Renata. I hope the presentation is coming up. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you again. Um, 
After hearing uh, the presentation on the whole work plan, I'm uh, happy I can show you the results of one of the work plan items. And that is, uh, as, uh, as was said before already, uh, the revision of the country progress table. So here's a uh, background on this. Um, we had a previous version of that table available. And that table was used uh, to track the implementation of the recommendations in the roadmap or of some key recommendations in the roadmap. Unfortunately, the information in this table um, has, was since then quite outdated. So most of the updates, they date 2019 to 2020. And uh, last year, the steering group was able to publish the revision of the roadmap, so the roadmap 2.0. And with that, also uh, the recommendations uh, changed a bit. So it was only natural to also revise uh, that table to better reflect the new recommendations and to adjust to the current uh, priorities. Um, for that, uh, to, get the new, to get the information for that new table, uh, we created a pre-filled questionnaire and sent it to 63 countries, so that is uh, UNEC UNIC member states uh, and then some additional countries that had uh, information in the table before. Um, and out of those 63 countries, we had a total of 50 who responded, which is an astonishing response rate of 80%. And for that, I wanted to say thank you to everyone who took the time uh, to fill out the questionnaire. Also. Um, if you have not been able to uh, respond yet, the questionnaire is still open. You all received a unique link. If you didn't, for any reason, you can contact me and uh, we will sort that out. Um, besides the questions that will be used for the new table or that are used for the new table, there's additional information asked in the questionnaire that is used for the work of the steering group. And uh, if... Um, everyone here agrees uh, the steering group intends this to become an annual exercise so annually we will send out another pre-filled questionnaire and update the information in the table now to the results one of the key recommendations in the roadmap uh, is to create a national indicator set um, in addition to the global monitoring framework because the global monitoring framework due to the fact that it's global sometimes has to put aside country specific contexts and um, this recommendation is uh, is followed by 80 percent of the responding countries related to that um, is whether or not a national roadmap on statistics for sdgs is available or an action plan and an action plan typically would include uh, a national indicator set, but also additional uh, factors, such uh, additional items, such as a communication plan. And it would typically take into account the resources that are available for the countries and also the needs that uh, the, the specific needs that the countries have. And approximately half of all countries have reported that they do have a national roadmap. Um, another I mentioned in the table and uh, recommendation is uh, whether the countries have a web platform to publish statistics on SDGs. So an example for that would be national reporting platform, national reporting platform. And, and here I'm glad we can report that the large majority of countries uh, do have one. And for all of these three dimensions in the table, if a link is available, you will also find a link in the new table, and the new table is available on the wiki of the, um, of the steering group. <clears throat> a new dimension that we are tracking in the revised table is uh, whether or not the NSO is the coordinator um, of the National Statistical System for SDGs. Um, that is not only a recommendation in the in the roadmap, but is in fact um, part of a general assembly resolution, which stresses that uh, the NSO should take on that role. And for 40, that is 80% of all countries, uh, they do in fact uh, take on that role as a national coordinator for SDG statistics. Seven um, said they have that role partially, um, but we have some additional uh, context that we receive from the countries. And from there, all of those countries, um, it, it is clear that uh, 
the responsibilities are at least um, uh, clearly defined in the countries, which also uh, to a large degree then follows the recommendation. For the three countries that said no, we do unfortunately not have any, any uh, context provided through the questionnaire. <clears throat> Another new dimension is uh, the whether countries use non-traditional data sources for the production of their SDG statistics. And uh, here we have approximately half of all countries uh, that do report that they are using, in fact, non-traditional data sources. Um, and uh, interestingly, most prevalent is um, the use of geospatial data for indicators under goal 11. So that is sustainable communities and cities, I believe. Um, and here it, it, it became quite obvious that uh, geospatial data is, uh, is uh, very, very useful um, to track these respective indicators. Um, the last result of the questionnaire I want to uh, present today is um, the number of global, uh, of, in, of SDG indicators of the global set that are produced by the countries themselves. And uh, unfortunately, only 35 uh, countries responded to that question. So we have 15 countries that did respond to the questionnaire, but uh, chose not to respond to the question, which might be an indication that it was very difficult to answer. Um, but on average, countries that did respond to the question report that they produce 128 indicators of the global set on average, 97 of which also on average is uh, um, being produced in full compliance with the global indicator framework. Um, interestingly, if you compare that with the data available in the UNECE database, um, the number of indicators available is much larger. So that means um, custodian agent agencies are able to uh, publish quite a lot more indicators that countries are publishing on their own, which is quite naturally. If we zoom in on, uh, on this graph, um, you see there's in blue the number of indicators produced by countries histogram, and you see that there's quite a lot of variability in what countries are reporting. Um, so the differences between countries are very large. If you uh, compare that with the differences of uh, data that is available in our database, then that, uh, that difference uh, gets reduced quite drastically. And that is something um, that I think uh, we should look into a little bit more and see if there are additional insights to be uh, gathered from this. But it seems that at least there is some degree of independence uh, of, the, uh, of the custodian agencies in the production of, of this, um, this data, whether it's estimation or, uh, or estimated some, somehow differently. And uh, with that, uh, I would like to give the floor back to uh, Renata and thank you all for your attention. Thank you, Jonathan, for this interesting presentation. And the results uh, seems really very, very interesting. And I already see comments or questions. So yeah, I invite you to start. Thank you very much for the presentation and uh, for allowing me to uh, pose my question. This is Güler from UN Resident Coordinator's Office in Azerbaijan. Um, so I see that, Jonathan, you mentioned um, the UNEC database uh, for SDG indicators. And usually when I'm looking for the SDG data, I go to the website of the UN, UN stats. Uh, but I know that UN ESCAP, they also have their SDG gateway. Uh, I just wanted to ask how these uh, databases, they are talking to each other. Thank you. Let me respond. I'm uh, in charge of this database at UNEC, so it would be <clears throat> easier. My name is Andres Vikat. I'm head of section for social and demographic statistics. Well, in the case of UNEC, it's rather simple because we are not taking anything else than what is available in the global database. So 
there is a relatively short delay how we, uh, after it appears in, uh, in New York, after which it appears in our database. And the advantage in this case is that you have only the selection of countries and a bit more uh, graphical interfaces that you can use for uh, viewing the data. But I know that other regional commissions have also different mechanisms of uh, collecting uh, data and estimating. So uh, there is some discrepancy there. But in the case of UNEC, and I will show you later, it's only the data that is in the global database, with very few exceptions. Thank you, Andreas. Tina? Uh, thank you. Uh, I wanted to add about this uh, last question that um, uh, Jonathan was presenting and also the graph. So the, the reason why we put this uh, question into the questionnaire uh, was that uh, also here in UNEC we are very often asked uh, uh, even by the EC management, but so how much data countries are able to produce? Where are the main data gaps? Uh, and if we say that, but we don't exactly know, then they don't like this answer. Uh, therefore, we thought that, okay, let's try, let's put this uh, question there. But even how to formulate the question, it was not easy because there are all kinds of possibilities that maybe country is producing the data or maybe country is not producing, it's produced by a, a custodian agency or it's somehow country is producing a proxy. So there are a lot of devils in the, in the details uh, here. And, and then, uh, then how, how do you, uh, when do you say that country is able to produce the data? Maybe there is one figure which is five or ten years old or, or how long time series do you require uh, uh, for that? Um, so I think this is a question that, uh, that this is one of those possible things maybe for further work and to look more into uh, detail by, I don't know, the steering group or, or maybe the next uh, expert meeting. Uh, when we look at the responses by countries, uh, then there is quite a number of countries for whom this number, how many indicators they can produce, is quite low maybe 30 indicators and then it, it and, and then they are uh, some of these are quite well developed countries so i think there are there are many many questions about uh, this and and it is an area worth trying to untangle what are actually the problems what is actually uh, the the situ uh, situation and to analyze these data and for for that reason we thought also shall we put these answers or this figure that countries give into the table that is on the wiki but we decided not because it uh, it can be interpreted in in so many ways and it's not clear what exactly it is telling you but we we need to deal with that and try to understand this uh, this better thank you Thank you, Tina. And if we are going to continue this questionnaire each year, it will be good to see the progress. So hopefully we'll find it. I see no more comments or questions. Just one comment uh, from the point of view of Polish SDG teams. Uh, concerning this country progress table. So we find this resource very useful because each time we are looking for any inspiration, we are going to this table and we are reaching uh, websites and resources, country resources. So thank you very much for this uh, table and for revision and updates to this table. It is indeed very useful. And now I think we can move on to the next part of session one, updates from the task teams. So just to remind you what Tina said already, we have three task teams within the steering group. 
And now in session one, we have updates from two of them, task team on communication and task team on capacity development. The third task team is on data transmission and uh, update from this task team will be during the session two because this session is very much connected with works provided by this task team. So now I invite Carolina Santos to present information from task team on communication. Carolina, please. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Is it working? Yes. Uh, okay, so my name is uh, Carolina Freste Sanz. I'm here representing Statistics Portugal. Um, and I'm also on behalf of my dear friend Olga Svierkot Strujewska, more or less. <laughs> Uh, she's my, my dear and brilliant friend from Statistics Poland and the co-chair of the recently reinstated uh, task team on communication of statistics for SDGs. And uh, the first thing that I would like to acknowledge is uh, the elephant not in the room, so we don't have a PowerPoint uh, presentation, which might be expected from a, a communication task team, uh, but it's easily explainable. Um, it's purposeful. It's not just lack of time. Um, it's because our work is still exploratory. For those of you who have been uh, following um, our most recent developments, this was a recently uh, reinstated uh, task team in October of last year. And therefore, nothing is set in stone. And this is one of also the key ideas that we wanted to highlight because um, the stones are up for grabs. So if if anyone wants to contribute and, and to help us shape our um, way forward, you are very much um, in time. So um, as some of you might recall, and I just mentioned, uh, there was a former task team on communication of statistics for SDGs, uh, which concluded its work uh, after making insightful contributions to, to both editions of the roadmap on statistics for SDGs, and after conducting a survey on existing communication practices. Um, it's Re-establishment, its recent re-establishment um, under a renewed purpose resulted from recent developments, some of which have already uh, been mentioned by by the chairs of the of the steering group, and I will be briefly go through them. So a year ago, the ad hoc task team on the promotional kit for the second edition of the roadmap was at this very meeting presenting a set of communication products uh, mentioned by by Sarah earlier. Um, which aimed at promoting the use of the, the roadmap worldwide. I think we were successful in, in developing these deliverables and in, in highlighting the roadmap's key messages um, in, in several formats, ranging from infographics to the, the task team flag, flagship product, which was a promotional video. But several challenges remained in promoting its use. And more importantly, while doing this exercise of being NSOs, trying to put ourselves in the shoes of, of users um, and bridging communication gaps, um, it became very clear that underlying communication challenges remained and they were permanent and cross-cutting to the whole statistical community. So it became evident that this community might benefit from increased guidance and interaction on how to make progress in communicating progress, slightly uh, changing the, the slogan already mentioned by Tina. So this was the context in which uh, TTCOM uh, was uh, reinstated last October. And from this uh, rebirth to now, a lot has happened and allow me to highlight the, the most important aspects. So firstly, a revised statement of purpose was submitted and the though the, the, the goal, the overarching goal of the team 
remains to improve effective communication of statistics for SDGs and thereby support the implementation of the agenda, there is also a renewed purpose of further promoting and facilitating the implementation and monitoring of the 2030 agenda with adequate communication activities, materials and tools. And we believe that this will be done by advancing communication initiatives and effectively delivering and showcasing uh, existing and future materials. Secondly, I would like to highlight that a true community was built and it is far beyond the geographical limits of the, the, um, the Regional Economic Commission for Europe uh, of the UN and I, I, I would like to acknowledge the countries that have joined. So we have Albania, Austria here present, uh, Belgium, um, Brazil, uh, uh, Switzerland, Hungary, Iceland, Lithuania, Poland, uh, Portugal, um, the UK, uh, USA, and South Africa. And not only has it extended beyond the geographical limits of uh, UNECE, it has also extended beyond the limits of the NSO community. So we have international organizations, of course, besides UNECE, we have uh, UNIDO, um, a custodian agents, as many of you know, for uh, SDG 9 and other public data providers, uh, such as the, the South African Forestry, Fisheries and Environmental uh, Department. So in itself, we believe that this widespread adherence, it's also a testament to the relevance and purpose of communicating uh, statistics for SDGs. Um, and we believe that this can only be increased by, uh, can only be achieved by increased integration and interaction on um, the SDG data uh, communication community. Thirdly, and I mentioned this in the beginning, the group is still in its inception phase. Um, we are outlining future deliverables to shape our common way forward, uh, but some outputs have already been identified and some of them even operationalized. Um, the first one that I would like to highlight and with a special um, very grateful thank you to Jonathan is the Teams platform for the group. It was developed recently and is now operational and we do sincerely hope that it allows for the creation and, of an engaged and interactive community. Um, the second, which is uh, currently um, being developed and thought of, is uh, the fact that the group has welcomed the idea of developing an SDG data communication repository with best practices and tools. And to avoid potential overlaps with pre-existing initiatives, uh, global exercises, other global exercises such as the UNSD Good Practices Repository were revisited. But we have concluded that this this UNSD initiative was more of a complementary but different nature than the proposed um, SDG uh, datacom repository because the UNSD website or repository is exhaustive, so it's not just focused on communication. It is country-driven, which we are trying to avoid. We are trying to focus on practices uh, rather than just promoting countries. And um, we think that this renders um, this output, this data comms repository, still relevant. The members of the group were also challenged to participate in a whiteboard exercise. So um, here I want you to visualize a sort of a marketing practice, which is where no idea is stupid, sorry for the expression. It's a safe, safe space to share uh, rough ideas, which would then be polished um, to systematize a list of feasible outputs for the group. Um, and finally, I would like to highlight the main uh, lessons that we have learned in this um, short, but I think very um, engaging uh, period. So we have learned that there is a common thread of challenges in communication, so in communicating SDG data. And they can be easily summed up to the need to simplify complex and sometimes overlapping information. We need to help 
uh, the statistical community to bridge the gap between the meaning of data and their interpretation by users. And some other uh, reoccurring issues include translating the extensive efforts in the data collection, data treatment dimension to the communication part. So even if we have a great product, how do we make it easy for users to use it and to know that it exists? Uh, other examples include uh, challenges in tailoring products to specific target groups, communicating with data providers, the dispersion of SDG data, VNR preparation, and of course, the, the, the reoccurring topic of overlapping uh, frameworks. Our second lesson learned is that even though our challenges are common, we have many different and creative ways to tackle them. And this is great because this means that we can learn from each other. So there's an immense potential for common growth and improvement. Some of the uh, practices that I, that I would definitely like to highlight in this regard are school and academia engagement w through SDG explanatory uh, training sessions, so literacy, statistical literacy promoting events, Disclaimers on data gaps, and I may say that this was actually shared by Austria and was fully taken on board by Portugal in our VNR preparation process. Uh, focus on commemorative, commemorative days to streamline SDG communication, uh, designing infographics, storytelling techniques, data visualization, open SDG reporting platform, social media presence. So the examples are very extensive. And this leads me to another very relevant finding, perhaps the most important one, which is the untapped potential of every member of the team. Uh, and I, I think, I think uh, you may find what I'm about to say relatable. So we all have regional leaders uh, that we sometimes look up to when we're trying to develop a new product uh, or to improve a pre-existing one. And what we have found is that apart from these regional leaders, and we may mention UK, Poland, Switzerland, and, and many others, there are very um, valuable experiences far beyond the obvious role models. And that's why with our data comms repository, we are trying to rethink the country-driven assumption because we don't want... Uh, we don't want NSOs just to look up for the regional leaders. We want them to look for the practices that they are looking for and to see who is doing what. And um, though we are very proud of this, of this work, I think we also need to acknowledge some shortcomings. Um, and, and one of them is that even, even though we have been able to operationalize in a very short uh, time the Teams platform, we are still struggling to get the type of active, lively engagement that we see in the meetings. And it might be attributed to technical difficulties, sometimes even small nuisances like having to switch off from our corporate account to, to the UN account. But this has been a bit hard and we, we, we would be happy to receive some suggestions on how you have, uh, in other groups, have overcome similar issues, maybe using other platforms, maybe using some other um, iteration um, approaches that have proved to be uh, more efficient. And so this was, uh, in a nutshell, or maybe not so tiny nutshell, uh, what uh, Olga and, and myself wanted to share with you. And I would really like to thank Olga because though she's not here today with us, uh, she definitely was and is the driving force of, of this movement of making progress and communicating progress. And um, I would like to finish on a hopeful note. I think we are uh, very proud and, and even moved by the outpour of interest, engaged participation, and we really do feel that there is a, a shared love for our craft and a shared belief that better data enables better lives. And I would like to, to finish with, with a quote from a, a social researcher, Dr. Brene Brown, which is uh, um, well known for her lectures on vulnerability. This is not what I'm here to talk about. But uh, she, she said a very important quote in my perspective, which was, um, 
data are just stories without a soul. And I do believe that we're in the business of, of maybe trying to make soulful data. And, uh, and I definitely think that this is the team to do it. And uh, I'm very proud of our accomplishments and I hope to do more in the future. So thank you all. And I'm... <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Carolina. And thanks for this beautiful and inspiring quote. Do you have any questions or suggestions to Carolina? Task team on communication is the youngest task team, but it's very enthusiastic, very ambitious. And as you could hear, they have already some outcomes. So it's really amazing. I see volunteer for discussion, so please. <laughs> Thanks, Karolina, for the presentation. It's not a question for you, but just an update from Serbia. I'm Ozan Runic, data management in UNRC of Serbia. We have, in terms of communications, we have translated the roadmap into Serbian language, uh, into Cyrillic, and it's on our website, and I've shared it with our colleagues that perhaps can use it in Montenegro, Bosnia, and Macedonia. So thank you very much. It's great news. It's really good to hear that you translated the roadmap. So thanks for this information. Uh, helped and enormously by the Statistical Office of the Republic of Serbia. It's not just a dry translation. It has been statistically proved, let's say, in terms of language. Thanks. It's uh, from your colleagues at Statistics Poland, Monika Gorzelak, and she congratulates the steering group on the second edition of the roadmap and its communication and just uh, found it extremely useful when working for the Statistical An Annex of Poland's 2023 uh, VNR report. Thank you, Monika. <laughs> Greetings from Geneva. I don't see a wound. No. <laughs> okay. I don't see more volunteers for discussion. So we can move on to Jelena Markovic and task team on capacity development. Jelena, I hope you are online. Yes. Hi. Hi to everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. It's not a pleasure to be online, but I would rather be physically present with you to have the fruitful discussion about the topic. But today I'm online and I will present the results of the task team on capacity development that have been working more than three and a half year now. So I would like if there's a possibility to share the presentation because it's going to be shared from your side. So, um, we have been discussing about the capacity development metrics that have been created within this group for more than three and a half year now, uh, years now, even four. Uh, our job started four years ago, and uh, when we started discussing about the term of reference, how to manage to incorporate all capacity development in one uh, tool that can be helpful from both sides, even from the offer side, from the very development countries that can a lot of expertise to share with the other countries that are not on the same level of development and they are really in the need to develop in a very easier way their capacity, the technical capacity, the IT tools, the modern uh, technology that is used these days to transform and uh, uh, improve the, the pro products of pro uh, production of statistics. We wanted to, uh, we started discussing how to incorporate everything in one tool and make it a little bit easy to uh, match both sides, the offer side from the statistical development uh, countries and the need side from the countries that really uh, need to, uh, um, to take over the knowledge from the, from the donor side. And uh, the, the reply on that question was really to create a matrix. And in that matrix, 
you can share the next slide because it's anyhow the the introduction of the term of reference. Uh, in June 2018, we created the term of reference in, and in that term of reference, we started thinking about how to prepare the one tool that have all that component inside. And we, in that moment, tried to um, put together in one place all the activities, tools, standards, uh, methods, um, strategies, and all the other activities that are somehow incorporated in the daily job of each national statistical institute or each national statistical system itself. It was very demanding, considering that a lot of the capacity development initiatives in that moment have already treated the same topic and they wanted to go a little bit more in the depth to understand which is the level of development, how we can uh, incorporate new modern uh, modern uh, tools and ideas, uh, what really has the necessity to be changed in that moment, how, with who, with which capacity development and others. We didn't want to go that much in depth because in that moment it would be very comprehensive activity, we wanted to see a very light vision of where the necessities are or where the offer can be found and how to match the information from both sides and then match even the institutions that can help each other. So the next slide. So what we, the intention of the matrix itself was. The matrix and the end looks like for the first version of the matrix looks like uh, it consists of two main uh, uh, division. The first one was the horizontal one and the second one was the vertical one. The horizontal one, it was a little bit very tricky to be put on considering that we wanted to put everything that one statistical national institute is treating in the daily job. And we wanted and we split it in three main pillars. The first one was strategical one, the second one's organizational, and the third one was the IT tools that are used in the daily job. The first one, the strategic one, wanted a little bit to have the comprehensive overview. Are the institution already strategical, strategically um, oriented? Do they have the necessary strategical uh, documents in place? So they can see where they want to go, what they want to achieve, and in which which uh, time framework they want to do it. And the questions that have been put in this pillar and in this division was mainly: Do you have a, a strategic a strategy related to the vision and the development of the office? Do you have the HR strategy, the project management strategy? the IT strategy, the policy of communication, policy of uh, the, uh, dissemination of official data. The second one, uh, the organizational one, was mainly focused on the statistical areas that we are um, covering in the national statistical offices and the standards and methods that we are using to produce to collect the data, to produce the data, and to disseminate the data within the statistical offices. Namely, they are covering social statistics, national account statistics, um, agriculture statistics, business statistics. And usually we are asking questions uh, related to the, develop the level of development of these statistics. Are they developed to do the, with, in which the um, statistical area especially they need help, uh, do they already have implemented the new standards methodology related to the GSBPA model or uh, GC model or the other standards that are used in our daily job, of course. Uh, the third one, uh, it was the I2, IT tools. Of course, that today we really need to improve our IT tools uh, for the production, for the data collection especially, but then again, and it was most visible on the, of course, COVID pandemic. But then again, we have started thinking about the um, editing of data, automatization of data editing within the house, and then again, automatization of data transmission to Eurostat or the other institutions in the system, and uh, uh, how to disseminate data in the most um, light, uh, most easier way uh, to transfer it to the automatic processes. 
And we were asking questions about, do you already have or implement uh, modern methods for data collection? Do you have the cut in place, come in place, how it's working? Do you need help with expertise uh, related to the implementation of or purchase of the new IT tools? Do you have the expertise related to the technical help to implement applicational systems and, uh, and modern softwares related to the production and dissemination of data? Um, in um, just one step, one step behind. Sorry, the slide behind this one. So, um, when we created the horizontal division and we put each statistical area activity or uh, topic that we uh, arrived in our sense that uh, statistical offices are treated in the daily job. We understood that we needed to ask some questions on the vertical dimension. And vertical dimension has been mainly, I already explained, we didn't want to go into the deep to understand where the really problems are and where, how to implement them. We just wanted to somehow see uh, that there is a problem and then connect it with the institution that in some way has the offer already in place ready to connect them with the need side and then let them discuss in which way they can continue the discussion about the implementation of the of the activities and how we manage it. We ask a very simple questions. Do you have the strategy? Do you have the uh, technical assistance? Do you have the enough expertise? Do you have the IT tools? If the question is no, then the question was, the second question was, do you need the expertise? Which level of expertise you need? Which topic from that expertise you think that is the priority for your office? In this way, a very light, the more uh, priority needs are somehow put in light and then it's much easier to connect the, connect the need side from the very light perspective where the where the requests are with the offer side that can see in a busy way to find where the uh, where the beneficiary can um, benefit the most from the offer that can they put on the table uh, it was created during the 2018 and 2020 we have been stopped from the covid um, pandemic in one year but then again we continued working during the 22 and uh, what uh, 21 and 22 and uh, now in this moment and then we are on the next slide now thank you we arrived to the moment when we created the matrix within the group uh, but uh, then we wanted to see how it really worked in the practice and we decided that we are going to pilot it and we piloted really in three different countries from the donor perspective and from the benefit from the offer perspective uh, and uh, we use uh, the pilot was done from three countries from Armenia, Poland and Albania and what they need to investigate during the piloting of the matrix they need to uh, examine the structure of it have we missed something do we double the questions is the question uh, the structure itself uh, understandable if everything that one statistical uh, st statistical national office is producing there or we need to add something to delete something so the second one is to check the statistical areas did we cover really everything because the structure of statistical areas it's not uh, always the same within the um, within our national statistical institutes of course and the national statistical itself the system itself they need to explore the extension is uh, the matrix already uh, prepared and ready to be um, shared not only by the national statistical institute because in the national statistical institute it's much easy to speak about the whole system and the structure that is put there from the strategy to the statistical products and standards to the it tools but even with the national statistical system that some in some countries are very developed and then the others are not uh, very using the whole standards and methods that uh, needs to be implemented within the uh, within the standard uh, within the UN and the EU standards. Uh, and the last one was to um, see really in practice if the matrix itself it's 
a very usable, easy and light tool to understand the most priority needs. And how to understand it by coordinating the process of fulfillment of the pro of the of the matrix. So the matrix is huge, of course, because a lot of activities are there. But the questions that need to be replied are very simple. But then again, the, it's a huge difference from uh, the part who is replying on the matrix. If the matrix, it's the, if the uh, questions to the uh, if the answers to the questions from the matrix is given by the expertise level or it's given to the management level. So we wanted to see and to give the pilot to the countries to understand if the difference by replying to the questions given in the matrix is different is, is different from the perspective top-down perspective for giving it from the managers managerial side or the differences are very visible if uh, it's given by the expertise side. So Next slide. We are now in the final phase of um, finalizing the matrix itself. The matrix have already have the structure. The pilot, the three pilots have already been done. We are now in the moment where we are incorporating the comments from three uh, pilot countries within the matrix. We are cleaning up the matrix and adding things that needs to be add. Uh, add. So, in this moment, we are trying to uh, identify how the comments related to the coordinational part of the fulfilling the matrix can be add within the matrix itself. Uh, beside the matrix, we already prepared the guidelines how to fulfill them and uh, the matrix itself and the documents are going to be, of course, updated considering that uh, we received the uh, the inputs from the countries, from the three pilot countries, and we are now in a phase of, um, of somehow incorporating them in the documents that we need to present, hopefully in the end of May. So, next slide. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope that uh, I try to explain the process itself and what the benefit of the matrix can be for all of us. But of course, additionally to this matrix, uh, today we have a lot of uh, international initiatives related to the capacity development. This uh, matrix can be one of the tools that can help us all find each other in an easier way, considering that the structure of the communication and help between donors and uh, beneficiaries have already been set up. But uh, maybe it can be used as a tool that uh, can facilitate the process of uh, discussions between the explanation moments from the beneficiary side, what we really need and what are the problems and where the problems are, and to connect with the donors from their perspective, what can they really offer? Because all of that can be easily put, uh, be put in the matrix itself and can be visible to all of us. So, thank you very much and uh, I'm open for all your questions. Of course, here is my uh, colleague Marina Gandolfo. She is a co-chair with the group together with me. She was creating the matrix uh, together with the, the, with the group. And uh, if she has something to add, uh, I'm more, more than happy to hear her. And uh, we are here for everything that you need. And if you have any questions, thank you. Elena, thank you so much. We don't have much time to uh, continue <laughs> this uh, topic, but of course, if you have any questions, here is the moment to raise your flag. Avunj, please. Uh Hi, thank you very much, uh, Yelena. Uh, I was wondering if you remember in 2019, FAO had conducted a inventory analysis for countries for their, I think, 21, 22 indicators. It was a very ex uh, extensive inventory analysis. Uh, did you look into that or have you benefited from any other external resources? Thank you. When we start to create the matrix, we use very much the Paris 21 capacity development survey that has been done uh, during the, uh, collected during the 2018. 
in that moment we have been using the results from the survey and the reply from the survey to incorporate it within the matrix and see if we can clear up all the if we catch all the statistical activities within the national statistical offices and how we uh, can um, incorporate them and not duplicate the results that have been already done through the survey in the matrix. Uh, anyhow, we followed up all the uh, national initiatives. We followed up even the FAO national initiatives, but it's the, um, the and the burn initiative on the other side, of course. And our intention was to finalize the matrix itself and then check how this matrix can be used in the following uh, initiative to promote a little bit of the matrix from our side to the other national statistic, national other um, initiative, international initiatives related to capacity development, so they can they they can benefit from the tool itself for their future surveys or analysis. So. Marina. Yes, I, I see Marina raised her hand. Marina, please. Uh, thank you. Um, good morning to all. Uh, very quickly, also to answer to Avunch, uh, following what Yelena was saying, uh, when we had uh, started developing the matrix, we had also consulted uh, the FAO. So uh, FAO has also, uh, and thank you for this, uh, I've also contributed in some, uh, uh, with some suggestion. And I would like also to uh, just add that uh, um, this matrix, that is a really a result of uh, hard work uh, by, by the task team, uh, should be considered as a lively document because uh, for sure this matrix uh, could be, uh, could benefit also of uh, some other uh, updated in the future, considering uh, the evolution that we are uh, facing. Things about, for example, data science or what else. Thank you. Thank you, Marina. Indeed, it's a living tool and uh, you are all encouraged to use this matrix and to share experience so we can have your feedback to know how to develop this tool. Thank you very much. I don't see more comments. So I think we can move on to the next part, which is uh, updates from uh, related groups on SDGs. And I will start with very brief information from high level group for partnership, coordination and capacity building for the 2030 agenda. So HLGPCCB provides strategic leadership and guidance on the organization of UN World Data Forum. And currently preparatory work for the World Data Forum in China is finalized. This forum takes place in Hongzhou uh, between 24 and 27 of April. So it starts uh, really soon. Uh, for a very long time, it wasn't obvious if our data forum could be organized uh, as in-person meeting be because of COVID restrictions. In late December, COVID measures were lifted for visitors traveling to China. And uh, based on that announcement, uh, HAG PCCB decided finally, just in early this year, to organize World Data Forum as in-person meeting. And there will be also possibility to for follow the forum remotely through an online platform. Another area of work uh, conducted by, by the uh, HIGPCCB is the revision of Cape Town Global Action Plan, so-called CTGAP. First discussion on the revision of this city gap was provided in 2021 and in order to assess the situation regarding financing and implementing the plan among countries, special service, a survey was developed among national statistical offices. Following the results of this survey, HLGPCCB established a special subgroup uh, which work on the revision process. There are two main general aims of the revision. 
First is to simplify the plan, and the second, second is to make it more outward looking. CityGAP currently contains six strategic areas, 14 objectives, and 66 key actions. So it has three level. Members of the HLG PCCB and issue partners agreed that the strategic area areas are still relevant, so there is no need to change these six strategic areas, but the framework would be simplified, meaning that some programs and activities that are included in these six areas can be changed and rearranged under, under these six areas. Then HLG PCCB recommends to reduce the levels of the existing structure by developing a single list of priority areas. These priority areas should be based on a combination of uh, the current objectives and key actions. And key areas, uh, sorry, key priorities could also, should also reflect the current context of the global data ecosystems and also situation in the countries. And finally, it is also recommended to change the introduction and the background of the city gap. And uh, it is also recommended to keep the name of Cape Town Global Action Plan as it is very well known name. These recommendations uh, were announced uh, to the UN Statistical Commission this year last uh, session, and they will be also promoted during the World Data Forum in China. After the publication of this recommendation, the first phase of a revision of CityGAP will be finished, will be completed, and uh, for 2024, it is planned the second phase, uh, which is going to find, to in identify these priorities. So in this second phase, there are two overarching questions that need to be answered. What new national or regional prior priorities should be integrated in an updated city gap? And how can a global plan be meaningful for a national or regional context? This is any, anything what I wanted to share with you from HLG PCCB. If you have any questions, I am ready to answer, of course. Azerbaijan, please. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, on the revision. So, um, to my knowledge, uh, for each data forum, in the end of the uh, data forums, there was a, a statement or plan of action for the future. And are you going to integrate um, the elements uh, of those statements into the revised version? Thank you. So, now it seems that there are parallel activities. So, of course, after the China World Data Forum, there is plan a new statement as uh, from the each forum, but this process of revision at this point of, of work does not uh, include this, uh, what will be after the China. But I think that in the second uh, phase, it could be included and it could be also acknowledged uh, how to implement these conclusions from the World Data Forum. So thank you also for this suggestion. I will make sure to uh, inform HLG PCCB about it. Okay, I don't see more questions. Sarah. Please give us update from IAEG SDG now. Yes, thank you. Um, the IEG, IEG SDG is um, an expert group comprising of experts from 28 countries uh, uh, under the Statistical Commission and is a sister group, let's say, to the HLG um, PCCB. 
Uh, it uh, deals with the indicators and the indicator framework. Uh, I am a member of, of the um, uh, expert group. We also have the chair of the expert group in the, uh, in the steering group, but it's too early for, for the chair to talk <laughs> from Canada today, so I'm going to do it. Um, uh, what's, uh, what uh, the, the major thing for, for, for the IEG for the coming years is the 2025 comprehensive review of uh, the indicator framework. Uh, the guiding principles for uh, the comprehensive review was adopted by the um, Statistical Commission in March 2023, uh, this March. And uh, this year, specific criteria for, um, for the review will be um, developed. So this is the, the big thing, let's say. Also coming up is the rotation of members. This is handled by uh, the regional commissions, and I, I think we will we will expect an email uh, soon uh, about this for for this region um, from from um, Tina. Um, uh, uh, yes. um, the the the. the the, the, the expert group has a, a couple of task teams. Uh, one of them is a task team on uh, sustainable development on uh, tourism statistics. Uh, this, is, um, this task team is continuing its work with a view to um, a proposal on an indicator uh, in the 2025 comprehensive review. Uh, there, the group is also discussing proxies we have had a few proposals for for replacing indicators with proxies um, and I are just now working on a process of of how to uh, um, how to decide on proxies and incorporate them uh, possibly in the framework uh, Another thing that the group is working on is a platform for capacity development and training. Um, it is uh, being developed now uh, based on a platform that is used by the, uh, a group that's called GIST that works on, on statistical um, uh, training. Um, and uh, it's, it's being developed now to sort of collect uh, everything in one place. Uh, and the last thing I want to mention is just that the, uh, every year the, the indicator framework is would sort of refined, mm -hmm. and the, these uh, refinements, annual refinements, will uh, continue on. Um, lastly, um, I like to uh, just say that the t terms of reference for the group was changed slightly um, and uh, approved by the Statistical Commission this year. Uh, there was a, um, a paragraph added uh, on active membership in the group. So um, the group is, is this is uh, this is super important for this big work on the comp uh, comprehensive review. Uh, we really need active members in the group uh, for, because this is a big, big, big job to do. And uh, this, I think this will also be um, highlighted in the, uh, uh, in the email on the rotation of members in the group. That was my update. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for this update. Again, Azerbaijan, please. Apologies for so many questions. This is just very interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, on the indicators, the SDG indicators 17, 18, and 1 on the SDG statistical capacity. Um, several years I'm waiting for the update for this indicator uh, because we have chosen it uh, as one of the indicators for our uh, UN Azerbaijan cooperation framework. Uh, any updates on that? Uh, we we are working on that indicator, and thank, I think we are close 
close actually to, to finalizing that indicator. Uh, we're working with uh, two organizations and, and two um, um, uh, already existing um, uh, frameworks for measuring statistical capacity and merging these um, or parts of them into, into one indicator. So I think we're, we're close to, to that. Yeah. Alonj, please. Since we can ask uh, so many questions, <laughs> uh, is there still a plan to have a major revision on 2025, right? It, it didn't change. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Now we can move on to the final item in this session, which is UNEC SDG report, uh, progress report, and uh, Andres Vikat will present this report. Andres, please. Thank you. Indeed, it is since uh, 2020 when UNEC is producing an annual uh, report on uh, progress on SDGs, that is to utilize all the data that you are collecting in your countries for some concrete progress assessment on the level of the region. So uh, this year it was the fourth time we did this and the third time when we used the methodology that is now used commonly among all the regional commissions of the United Nations. So here, of course, you know very well the aim of this uh, expert group is measure, uh, about measuring sustainable development goals when we look at the global framework 17 goals, 169 targets, 231 indicators. And uh, when we speak about indicators, most of them have actually sub-indicators. So the number of data series is actually in thousands that have to be processed. So there is a lot of numbers to synthesize considering 56 countries and um, all the data since 2000 that is taken into account in this assessment. Well. Of course, in practice, we deal only with the data series that have observations where we can see a change over time and a sufficient number of countries produce them. So in the end, there are 367 data series which relate to 156 indicators, 115 SDG targets and all the 17 goals. So about two thirds of the indicators are included. What do we do in this progress assessment? Well, just four main points to highlight for you here. First, estimating the anticipated values. So for each data series and each country, we estimate uh, an anticipated value for 2030. That is the value that would be reached uh, by that time if recent trend continues. And uh, then the value for the region is considered generally the median of the country's values. In the second point uh, for each data series, we establish uh, the desired target value. That is what would be the desirable status in 2030. And uh, for example, it is very often given in the 2030 agenda itself, like when you talk about eradicating extreme poverty, then the desired value at 2030 is zero. And uh, in total, there are 77 such indicators which allow the desired value to be uh, taken directly from the agenda. Uh, for the others, we use uh, the champion area approach that you can read about in the report and the technical, uh, re technical <clears throat> papers referred therein. The third uh, point I wanted to highlight is uh, uh, then the estimating the anticipated progress index. So there is a, um, a, a way to um, relate the anticipated value and the desired target value. And then uh, through this index, basically, we measure how far uh, we are from that uh, desired value if current trend continues, or how, how far it would be in 2030. And then uh, there is the aggregation of um, that index ac first across all sub-indicators to come to the level of an indicator and then across all indicators to the level of the target, which is uh, on the level on which we present the results. And then finally, 
This is where we get to the aggregated results on the SDG target level uh, presented as traffic lights. If uh, the uh, anticipated value uh, reaches what is desired, it is on track. If it falls short, it needs to accelerate. And uh, if it is on the, uh, going the wrong way, the trend has to be reversed. So the whole uh, uh, presentation of results takes place on the, uh, using this uh, traffic light system. And then, yeah, let me just explain quickly what did we find. Well, the main message is that uh, currently uh, the UNEC region as a whole uh, will achieve only 21 targets by 2030. And this observation is down from 26 uh, that was assessed last year. So by taking into account the most recent data, the situation is not, uh, has uh, deteriorated. For uh, 79 targets, uh, progress has to accelerate. Uh, and uh, for 15 targets, the same number as last year, the current trend needs to be reversed. So the details of all this is uh, in, in, uh, in that slide, which uh, shows uh, the observations for all the targets. You cannot read them in detail uh, in this slide, but uh, this is to, sh to say uh, also that there are many in gray color, meaning that uh, for 54 targets, we do not have any indicator that would allow a regional level measurement. Uh, but this gray has uh, been uh, going down. That, me that means this year we were able to measure 10 more targets <clears throat> than was the case in last year's report. So, and then to just zoom in as an illustration into one of the targets that would be maybe more interesting for you as an audience is uh, uh, goal 17, which also has the greatest number of targets of all. So um, here probably uh, the, the important uh, point is that um, it deals also with about statistics on SDGs. So uh, if you look at uh, target 17.18, um, uh, this is on national statistics availability and 17.19, which is statistical capacity. Uh, both are close to the topics of this meeting. Both are in yellow, meaning that progress needs to accelerate. But then, yes, there are uh, lots of other indicators here. For example, uh, the ones mm, on macroeconomic stability that pertain to target 17, 13, uh, this uh, has deteriorated. It is measured through a whole uh, dashboard of indicators. It's no surprise, of course, that uh, this, uh, uh, as a result of the crisis, uh, the situation has become more difficult. And uh, also, uh, well, financial and technical development aid for SDGs uh, has been uh, uh, decreasing uh, and the use of uh, country-owned results frameworks in development interventions in the region are also in the red. So uh, the, the share of domestic budget funded by domestic taxes target 17.1 declined in nearly every country with data. So we capture some of these uh, crisis-related issues uh, very directly here, even though there is, the, you know very well, there is some time lag in uh, how the data travels first uh, from the national offices to the international agencies and then to the, uh, to the global database, which is where we take all the data from, with very few exceptions. And uh, just to mention for the record that it is the, uh, as of 19th of December last year, when the uh, data is taken from the global database for this report. Then just to highlight then here on the goal 17, the, the two uh, positive points, uh, yes, this is about fixed internet broadband subscriptions and the proportion of individuals using the internet. These are actually one indicator each under the two targets, 17.6 and 17.8, on which the region continues to do very well. Well, 
the whole presentation using these traffic lights and synthesizing the results to the level of the region, of course, leaves out the whole variation. Everybody knows that the countries vary in how they progress, and, uh, and you can uh, study this uh, uh, from the dashboard uh, for SDGs that we host at UNEC. So um, that would provide you different ways in analyzing how countries are doing at uh, different uh, indicators. And this is available also in the Russian language. This was the core part of the report, presenting the results and uh, describing them in detail. But as someone said earlier in this meeting, it's also there has to be some soul to the date, data stories. And then we have stories actually provided um, uh, by different agencies, the United Nations country teams that are included in the report. So when you go, <clears throat> and look at the report, you will see um, some, some of them are really data-driven, some are less so, showing the practice of how SDGs are implemented in the region in very concrete ways. And uh, finally, yes, to, so that you remember, I put on once more the slide with the main results, 21 targets on track, 79 need to accelerate, and 15 need to reverse. So this is the high-level view that is considered helpful for framing various discussions, including the ones at the UNEC Regional Forum on Sustainable Development that was held here two weeks ago. And we intend to continue with such assessments annually. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Andres, for this uh, interesting information. Do you have any questions to the report? Austria, please. It's a very good overview and I'm uh, already working on a plan how to give an overview for the indicators and the targets in Austria. Uh, but I have one question. What do you do if you have two indicators for one target and they don't go in the same direction? How do you, uh, what do you do with this target? There are several such cases. It is all averaged out. So the index values are averaged uh, for each target. And then it depends on who is further, uh, whether the negative overweighs the positive and the, the, the idea is that the index normalizes all the measurement scales. So when, when one is more off target than the other one is on target, then the negative would prevail, or most likely it would end up being an accelerated progress uh, status somewhere in between. Uh, so it is, uh, since the amount is huge, and one has to really find a robust and simplified approach that, that could be used across the board, because, of course, if somebody takes to analyze the situation under each specific indicator, you would get some uh, predictions that are maybe more informed from the various factors around it. But in the end, using this high-level view, uh, robust averaging is, uh, has been uh, really um, sufficient to get uh, uh, results presented on that kind of aggregate level. FAO, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, I just wanted to highlight that uh, FAO has developed uh, a methodology for progress assessment that uh, is uh, partially different from what uh, uh, the methodology that was developed by ESCAP and adopted by the other regional commissions. Uh, there are three main points uh, on which this uh, methodology is different from uh, the methodology adopted by the regional commissions. Uh, first of all, uh, we, um, we don't set uh, quantitative targets when they are not set by the target itself. So, and this is for two reasons. Targets should be, uh, my, in our view, uh, established by politicians, not by statisticians. Um, and the second point is that uh, um, the, um, the target 
uh, with this approach is set up by the best performing countries. And this creates uh, a big uh, problems, in my view, in comparing the performance of uh, countries that have a starting point that is uh, uh, much worse than other countries and they don't have the possibility to achieve the same level of progress uh, in the same time. So to me, it's, uh, it's creating a bias in this way, uh, pretending that certain countries will achieve the same values of other countries. Since in every region there are uh, big inequalities across countries, uh, taking the best performers as the target would create, uh, in my view, a biased assessment of the progress of uh, uh, countries that are uh, not uh, so well, uh, I mean, they are not well positioned at the beginning of the process. Um, the, um, the second point is that uh, um, it, the, <clears throat> the progress assessment has two dimensions, uh, the assessment of the current status and the assessment of the, um, on the uh, possibility of achieving the target by 2030. So a proper progress assessment and an assessment of how distant is the target now from uh, where we want to uh, be in 2030. Now, uh, the assessment of the current status done by ESCAP is in reality a progress assessment up to the point uh, of the current year and not the distance from the target, a proper current status. So it's... Uh, we are calculating a progress assessment twice. Once with respect to the current year, and the second time with respect to 2030. And in my view, this is not correct. The third point is the fact that um, the, um, um, yeah, how we can aggregate different indicator at target and goal level. So doing it by using indexes is creating uh, a lot of problems. We know that indexes are not numbers, but qualitative uh, assessment that help to rank countries, but they cannot, uh, you cannot do any operation on indexes, uh, index numbers, uh, in the sense that you cannot say if, uh, you have uh, doubled your performance, or if uh, a certain um, index has progressed uh, by 20% or by 30% or more. Um, usually, these rankings are very unstable, and uh, um, they are uh, um, providing rankings that change year by year because of little changes in the basic indicator. A different approach, we, we use a different approach that is based on the, a dashboard approach, uh, which count in a way the number of uh, indicators for which the target has been achieved and the proportion of indicators for which the target has been achieved. Uh, we have developed a shiny app um, that uh, Every country can be can use uh, to using this methodology, and uh, this shiny app has also the possibility of replacing the global data with the national data. So you can use the data that you want to produce your uh, specific uh, assessment, and even disaggregated data uh, can be used for that purpose. Um, and the, the Shiny app is available on our website, uh, and we can uh, support countries in, in, in using it. Thank you.
thank you, Pietro, for bringing this academic discussion into this uh, group. Well, uh, there are lots of uh, uh, arguments uh, to say about each of the shortcomings you mentioned, but I should uh, probably begin by the first one where you uh, were pointing out uh, the approach to best performing countries. We are not uh, creating a bias and we are not pretending anything. We do exactly uh, what we say in the report, and that is to uh, take the best trend observed around 2015 or the best level observed around 2015. And then uh, it is not the best level now or not the best level, uh, the best trend now. So this is, uh, in, in essence, is not a bias. It is what is actually observed. And in that sense, one can always argue academically what is uh, better or what is not, whether statisticians can uh, take a point of view of uh, which are the best countries, but this is empirical. It is, we are not making it up. We observe it in reality. And it is, if it is a problem uh, for other countries to catch up, then, well, it is measured on the level of the median. So uh, one has to see to what direction the trend goes and uh, to establish when we are there or not. The current status versus anticipated. In the UNEC version, we are not using the current status assessment. It is only based on the anticipated progress index. And it, uh, well, it is, uh, it is correct in the way it is, cal uh, it is calculated and uh, transparent in that sense. And uh, of course, uh, there are also these um, uh, um, apps that uh, countries could use in calculating their own aggregated assessments. ESCAP has developed an app that uh, would, um, would allow a country to put in actually their own set of indicators, their own um, targets, which they have established politically or for some other reasons. And, uh, and they can uh, play around with it as a tool, uh, which can be very helpful for politicians to try to synthesize the, uh, the whole uh, universe. I would say that there is no single correct answer how to synthesize and aggregate all the information in order to achieve an aggregated assessment, but I would disagree with any statement saying that something we did is creating bias uh, wrong or, not, uh, pre or pretending something. So uh, this is definitely what we are not doing, and, and there is plenty of academic literature that would uh, uh, underlie uh, the solid foundation of this approach. So in that sense, uh, I would uh, like to conclude that uh, you, can, uh, you can read uh, exactly what is in the methodology and understand why, why this uh, uh, or how this um, kind of assessment is um, uh, describing the reality and what it says and what it cannot say. So there are limits to every every method, and uh, this is one of them, and uh, this is the one that is uh, currently used for all the regional commissions, and it is solid. Thank you. Thank you, Andres. I completely agree that methodological issues are very complex and tricky indeed. And uh, with this, I would like to close session one. Thank you for all interventions or presentations for this session. Because we are uh, out of the schedule a bit, I propose to shorten a coffee break. And uh, please be back in 11.35. And we